Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hype, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host of Hype, and welcome back to the Baseball Hype, hopefully you like this video, and hit that subscribe button, so that's one one nothing against the Marlins, very close game obviously, but before we get into this video, if you're not on X, and you're not on Facebook, hit the subscribe button, we're going to have plenty of videos for you. We're going to have at least three videos for you every day from now on. Uh, people have been loving it. A lot of people have been coming in. I'm welcome all the new people that come in here. And uh, you have a lot of fun here. We laugh a lot. We have a lot of fun here. And I expect everybody to get along with each other and, and uh, talk about our favorite team. But uh, Mets won one nothing. Mets got really great pitching today. Now, I would mention the Marlins cannot hit. They're not a good offensive team. I know they scored seven runs last night. Against Sean Mania, but they they just not a good uh, they're just not a good offensive group, uh, and really not a good offensive organization. They it's been a long time since they've uh, developed a really good offensive player out of their organization. Not since uh, Christian Yelich and John Carlos Stanton, and, uh, that dirtbag uh, Marcelo Zuna, they've not really uh, had any really good players come out of their farm system. But the Mets. Uh, we're able to shut them down today. Uh, Luis Severino pitched really well today. Uh, he kind of struggled in that sixth inning, and Mendoza came out and basically told him, you know, wake your ass up. We're going to, you got to get out of this inning. And he pitched really well today. Uh, you could see a veteran pitcher going up against a fairly young, inexperienced lineup, and he was able to shut them down. Uh, he went six innings. He pitched, and in six innings that he pitched, he, uh, he had two, run, two runs, I mean, two hits, excuse me, no runs. And, of course, he walked three batters and he struck out seven. Uh, he looked really good. He had some really good stuff today. <clears throat> and he was dialing up pretty good in that in that last inning that he was in. Um, he was doing much harder in that inning than he was really through most of the game. So that was very interesting. He's now pitched 115 innings, which is the second most that he's, the third most that he's pitched uh, in the major leagues and the most that he's pitched since 2018. So that's... Let's kind of monitor this. That's a big reason why they're going to go to a six-man rotation when Senga is done. Senga right now is pitching in, in AAA. I don't have any update for you on there. But uh, that is something that the Mets are going to have to keep an eye on because uh, the, the pitch load on, on Severino. Because obviously, you, you want to be able to manage it properly. And of course, you know, the Mets tomorrow, they got Christian Scott going tomorrow. And they got to match him. Now, the one thing they did, which was... Uh, something to keep an eye on for the rest of the season. It's Jose Buta, who's pitched really well, whether he's been in the bullpen or whether he's been in the rotation. He came out in the seventh inning, pitched really well, did walk a batter, which has been an issue. He has to stop that if he's going to be in the bullpen. He cannot walk batters, obviously. And he struck out two bats, and Daniel Nunez came in again uh, after giving up two hits in that inning. And it was getting a little hairy. He was able to get navigate through that... Uh, that eighth inning, and he struck out the side, and he struck out that final batter. I don't know what the, uh, Francisco Alvarez is saying to these pitchers, but boy, he gets their attention. Um, he really does get their attention, and uh, he is he is very special. I don't I don't throw that word around about too many players, but he's very special to watch, and uh, we should be very happy to watch him play every day because players like him do not come along very often, and his leadership ability. His leadership skills that we're seeing right now uh, says a lot of great things about the Mets organization moving forward. Right now, the Mets are tied with the second wild card because the Cardinals lost today. Believe it or not, I couldn't believe this when I saw this. The Arizona Diamondbacks are two games behind the Mets and the Cardinals. Wow. Where the hell did they come from? They played so poorly. But there they are. So... The manager seems to know what he's doing, and the players have sort of picked it up. And, of course, Edwin Diaz came in the ninth inning, and he shut the door down. Uh, you knew, once he struck out that second batter, and how quickly it was that uh, that, that game was ending pretty soon, because he felt it. I mean, the first pitch he threw in the game uh, in the ninth inning was 99 miles an hour, or 98 miles an hour, right down the middle. So you knew right away that he, he was feeling it. And he had really good stuff today. So he, he was... You know, and at one point Chisholm had to like slow him down. He had to like call timeout on the second before the second pitch, because uh, 
you know, one thing we notice about Diaz, he, he's very much into the, uh, you know, getting his rhythm down and shutting the game down as quickly as he can. Now, the one thing that the, that the about this game was that the Mets scored only one run. And he scored on an out. And they scored in the fourth inning when uh, Francisco Alvarez hit a ground ball. And uh, P. Alonso scored in that fourth inning. Um, you know, you're going to get a lot of, you're going to get one nothing games from time to time. It's the first one nothing game of the season for the Mets uh, since last year. First one nothing win since last year. one nothing wins are very odd because you never know how it was going to come from um, at any point. But the Mets were able to squeak this game out and get this win. We run down to the line a little bit. Uh, I would say this. The Mets hit the, have hit the ball really hard in the first two games of the second half. So it's not so much that they're not having good at-bats. It's just the result. It's not a positive result. It's a negative result and that the Mets aren't uh, driving in runs with these. But J.D. Martinez has had very good at-bats. Brandon Nemo had a really good bat in the eighth inning. I'm surprised he didn't get a hit. Uh, Lindor uh, drove the ball pretty good in the eighth inning, as, in the ninth, in the ninth inning as well, including Brandon Nemo. So the Mets have had really good at bats uh, over, the last, over the first two games of the second half. So that is a good sign moving forward. Now, over the next couple of days, again, tomorrow, the Mets have Christian Scott going. And I believe on Monday, they got David Peterson going, and the Mets come home and play in the Bronx against the Yankees. So we'll see how that goes. And hopefully by then they'll have Jose Quintana back because he's been sick over the last uh, few days. So we'll see if that, that just changes things. Anyway, what a difference a game makes when you get starting pitching and you get a, a lockdown bullpen, um, you get the win. And uh, we saw that today, this afternoon. Now the Mets are now 15-47 with 97 games having been played and 65 games left. Now... We have until July 30th to see what the Mets do at the trade deadline. They could certainly use, use a setup man. I said this during the live stream on Friday. I, I'm very uneasy about using the Daniel Nunez just based on his inexperience. You know, keep going to him in the, in the eighth inning. I'm very uneasy about it. And obviously they don't have a lefty in the bullpen. Jake Deke, but he's a Deke. He's terrible. He's a Deke. You can figure that out. What I mean, he's terrible, okay. And I understand that uh, Stalin Marte is is feeling a little bit better, and he's getting close to being ready. The Mets could get could certainly use another outfielder. I know that uh, DJ Stewart went uh, two, one for two in this game today, like a sort of double and a walk, but he's he's not cutting it. He had a bat later on in the game where he struck out. Uh, he's just not cutting it. Um, he is like a weird, weird version of Daniel Vogelback. I see him. And I see Vogelback. At least uh, Stewart can play the can play the outfield a little bit. But the Mets should look to get another bat in this lineup. At least for now. I mean, Stanley Monte is not going to be ready for at least another three or four weeks. You know. I really would like to see them get another guy either off the bench or something a little bit better than what what they have in Stewart. Stewart is just not cutting it. And and I've said this, I guess we know this, is that Stewart has options in the minor leagues. And even if they don't have options for him, just get him out of here. <laughs> you know. Oh, a little update. Brett Beatty's playing second base in Syracuse. I hope we never see him back in the, with the Mets. I don't think he could hit. I just want to let you know, but let you know that. Um so tomorrow they play at 140. You know, there'll be plenty of videos tomorrow. Will there be a live stream tomorrow? I don't know yet. But there'll be plenty of live streams going leading up to the all I mean up to the excuse me, up to the trade deadline. Uh, I'll have one on that Sunday, that Monday, and that Tuesday. And of course, uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun talking about the Mets and all these different rumors. I'll have plenty of videos for you tomorrow. And hopefully you subscribe to the baseball hut. This is the best Mets channel. You could possibly find, and it is the most active. So I'm not just going to do a video when the Mets play a game, or there's a trade, or some news item. But you'll have something about the Mets every day. So this is a very uh, different channel. It's much more active, much more entertaining than some of the monkey crap. I mean, some of the other channels that you watch and are subscribed to. Trust me on that. 
So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Baseball Hut. Have a good day, and I'll see you later.